So, my name is Kalle, and today I'm going to talk about no-code AI and how to simplify the AI tech stack. And when I'm done, I hope you will feel empowered that you can solve your uh, problems with AI. Uh, if you're a developer, then you can simplify your, uh, your working processes. And if you're a no-coder, then you could uh, just start using and solving your problems. Okay. So who am I? Uh, my name is uh, Kalle, uh, and I'm. Uh, I love to explain stuff. I'm. I'm a tech writer. I'm not a data scientist. I'm not an engine. Uh, I'm not a, uh, a developer. But uh, I can do AI because the, now we have no code uh, tools. Uh, so it's really amazing because when I find an idea that I want to solve with AI, then I just use AI as a problem solver. Uh, I also, in my work, I write a lot of text, I create a lot of uh, videos, I create a lot of uh, courses. Most of it uh, ends up in peltarium.com slash knowledge center. So if you want to know what AI is, you can go there and read up, uh, read up about it. I also love explaining stuff. And uh, for us who love explaining stuff, there's a community called Write the Docs. So if you are one of us, you please join Write the Docs and let's have a discussion how fun it is to explain stuff. Okay, uh, so what is a Peltarion and uh, what kind of company is that? So it's founded by Luca and Mons in 2004. There are two data scientists who uh, were solving problems for their uh, customers and they were solving them uh, in the same way over and over and over again. And then they realized, hey, let's do a platform so we don't have to do it over and over and over. Same thing again. So they made a platform and then they realized, hey, there are more data scientists out there that can uh, that wants this tool. So they, st they have the platform now. And now we're 80 person uh, uh, people uh, in, uh, in f from all over the world, uh, from uh, many big tech companies in Stockholm, uh, situated in Stockholm, yes. And uh, our vision is to make AI technology usable and affordable for everyone. That means not only the big and powerful, and that means not only for developers and uh, data scientists, that means for everybody who have a problem that can be solved with AI. So the idea here is that you just had realized that you have a problem that can be solved by uh, AI. And for developers and data scientists, our tool is great for making your life easier. So you don't, uh, so, uh, so you don't have to uh, rely on notebooks, as Ilva was talking about, uh, that someone else wrote many years ago, so now we can use it together in the same tool. Uh, so, first thing first, what is AI? So it's a buzzword and, uh, uh, and it means uh, many people uh, talk about it and many people mean a lot of things about it. Uh, so, and, and, and since many people uh, don't know what it is, they, many people get scared about it. And I think that is a problem from, uh, from a democracy point of view, but also for a, uh, how to use it point of view. So uh, I would try to uh, go a little bit deeper on what AI is. So uh, I start with saying that it's uh, to have two properties that I like. So it's one is that it's autonomous. It's a, a, it, AI has the ability to perform tasks that is complex uh, in complex environments without constant guidance by a user. So you don't have to look at it all the time. It does it uh, by itself. And it's also adaptive. It's ability to improve performance by learning from experience. So you, you feed data, historical data, that you, that you know uh, the result of this uh, data into a model. So, that's, uh, so it's, and, it, and it learns from this historical data. So uh, uh, I would go one step below that. Uh, so uh, the math behind it, uh, because I think it's good to know that uh, to know exactly what it is. Because AI is math used very cleverly. So you, so it's nothing more. It's it's a math. And uh, Ilva, she's the expert here. Uh, but this is my illustration of it. So this is a CNN, a very common uh, or used to be a very common uh, classification model. So what it does, it classifies an image and then uh, predicts the, uh, what it is at the and so you train it on historical data uh, and, uh, and then uh, uh, it learns and it predicts at, at the end. So what you do is that you take a uh, batch of numbers here and you pour it down, pour it down uh, the funnel down to the end and then the model predicts. And since you know what it is, you know this, the correct result, you, uh, you can say, you can slap it uh, on the finger. No, that was wrong. Please redo. 
and then go up again uh, to the funnel and then change the parameters and take another batch and you pour it down and hopefully it gets a little bit better so and then it predicts and you can uh, say what the if, if the result is good and then go up again take a new batch go down predict compare change a little bit go up take another bit and go down and hopefully if you iterate this up and up up and down hopefully the prediction gets better so that uh, basically how it works this classification model works so it's math used cleverly uh, so this is uh, for example this is the image classification of a cat uh, all the variables love cats, right? Uh, so, uh, so this one, uh, we have a data set that consists of cats, walruses, dogs, owls, and hedgehogs. And if you train a model and then you deploy it and then you send in a new uh, image of a new uh, uh, animal and then it predicts what the result is. It's not dead certain, just as Ilva says. It's not, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's relevant. Uh, 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 no, it's, it, it depends. So it, a little bit, so it, it could be a, most likely a cat, but it could also be a walrus. So it most likely is a cat. So it's not, if a model is dead certain, 100%, then it's probably something that's wrong. Yes, uh, okay. So, and also we talked a bit about um, big data and a, l a lot of data. And often having a lot of data, uh, it, there's a risk of having too much data and there's not, not, not good data. And the thing is, as just since AI is a model learning from historical data, so if you put in bad data, garbage, then you will have garbage, uh, garbage results. So if you have a, a many images of uh, cats that's not really looking like cats, then the model will be really good at classifying not really good images of cats. So if you, predict, if you don't put in a really good image of a cat, then it won't realize that it's a cat because it hasn't learned on that. So, uh, so, so, and here also I would uh, stress that it's in very interesting, uh, or it's a, it's a problem with biased data. So if you have, uh, if you had data that is not um, uh, is relevant for how the real world out there looks like, then uh, you will have a model that predicts uh, something that you don't want it to, to predict. Uh, so this is uh, a, simplistic, a simplistic version of uh, an AI workflow, uh, project workflow. So you collect the structured data, uh, you, uh, you cu curate and digest data to your model, you train a model, and you evaluate uh, many different models, because uh, often your, your first model isn't the best one. So you try to iterate and find the best model. Uh, and then when you found the best model, then you try it out. You deploy it, and then you can send, send new image to, uh, or new data to it and this is done uh, historically with many 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 different kinds of tools uh, so and it's uh, it's a mess to keep track of uh, all the versions of these and it's a mess of making sure that they connect together uh, it's uh, it's really hard I mean so um, uh, so uh, and now but now with the co no code movement uh, it's it becomes much more easier uh, and especially Having all these very techy tools uh, makes it really impossible for people who are not developers and not data scientists so to do to solve the problems with AI because it's so, such a hard uh, threshold to uh, to to move over. Uh, but with if you have no code tools, then you can if you have a problem that it can be solved by, with AI, then you can actually uh, solve it. So uh, I will not uh, talk. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, okay. uh, uh, I have a little problem with uh, my uh, presentation here, but I will. Uh, I'll do it off of memory. Uh, so here we go. There we go. Uh, the no code movement. I will not go totally deep dive into all the tools that are out there. Uh, but I will talk a little bit of the ones that I think that you can check out first. So if you. Uh, uh, coding uh, web apps, then I, you definitely should look into Bubble. It's a really good tool, uh, no code tool to build web apps. Um, Power Apps uh, is a Microsoft version, so if you're in the Microsoft ver universe, then you should definitely look into it. Of course, it's us, that's why I'm here, uh, where, the, where you can uh, build and train your model and deploy it. Uh, we also we can use the, the tablet data, image data, and text data, and um, so, uh, so you can deploy it, and you can pl you can use it in both Bubble App, Bubble and Power Apps, and many different other connect uh, connections 
with other tools. We have other competitors that call, uh, for example, Obviously AI, that is a no-code tool for uh, uh, tabular data. And if, if we have Loeb for quite simplistic uh, image classification tool uh, that was bought by o Microsoft last year. Uh, we have Teachable Machine, which is uh, Google's version uh, of Loeb, in a, in a sense. And then one of my favorite tools is Zapier, which uh, uh, automates your workflows. So if you have one, uh, uh, you have to have one uh, uh, very uh, boring uh, task that is uh, clicking and copying things, then you can automate that uh, between different tools. You have different connectors. It's really good to use. Um, not AI, but uh, it's a really good uh, no-code tool. Okay, so uh, now that we know that we have uh, all these no-code tools and you don't have to be a developer and you don't have to be uh, a data scientist to, do, to learn AI, to use AI, uh, you should start to think of what, what, okay, what kind of problems can I solve with AI? Uh, you as a, uh, wherever you are in the world. Uh, so one, uh, uh, one area is similarity. So you can, use, uh, you can build tools that uh, define similar images. Uh, if you're building a web shop, then you can f uh, if someone searches for a red shoe, then you can f show them red other red shoes. Or if you uh, have a chatbot or a uh, frequently asked questions uh, tool, then you can, uh, you can use the text similarity to find similar questions. If uh, you find uh, the, the AI understands the meaning of the text and then uh, replies to the meaning of text instead of the text that, uh, that the user types in. It's uh, really cool, actually. Uh, you can use it for classification. Uh, so you can classify images or you can classify text. Uh, so here you have, is, is it cancer or not? Uh, is it a number? Is it a cat or is it walrus? Here you can uh, classify if uh, someone is uh, posting something rude in Slack, or if you can you can trigger on, uh, if someone uh, tweets uh, in your in your company name something uh, rude, uh, then you can uh, get notification. You can classify books by uh, genre, uh, so on so so forth. Uh, you can d use segmentation, so we can have an image and you can segment out different parts of the image. Uh, you can use it for regression, uh, that is uh, predicting a number, so predicting a for uh, weather forecast, uh, what kind of temperature it's going to be, so you can price for stock market or uh, house pricing, uh, and how much you're going to sell if you're an ice cream seller and you want to sell ice cream, how much will I sell if, uh, if the weather is bad or if the weather is good. So all these kinds, uh, these are a lot of these are uh, customer focused. Uh, I realized this, uh, this uh, but I often uh, I would say that if you have a data uh, and then you, that you want to uh, that you have easily accessible your own data, then you can uh, make uh, AI uh, in you just for yourself as well. It's uh, it's becoming that easy. Um, so. Uh, uh, so right now, AI is not a technical challenge. Uh, it's get, getting m more and more an idea challenge. What, uh, not only thinking really, really big, but also thinking really small. What simple tools can I build myself to solve my problems? So it's more becoming a tool to solve your problems, uh, like many other tools. So uh, where can I go from here? If you don't know uh, much about uh, AI, I would say that one thing is to start with going the elements of AI course. Uh, it's a course from it's a free course from Helsinki University. It's uh, really really good, uh, and uh, it's been going on for like two years. And uh, uh, I think the, you, uh, people from uh, like uh, seventy different countries have attended it. So uh, it's becoming a worldwide success. Of course, you can sign up to Peltarion uh, and try out our tutorials, which I, which I have written most of them. And, uh, and you can also reach out to me, uh, at uh, my, that's my mail, and uh, there's also my LinkedIn profile. And just or if you ask question in the Peltarion, uh, Peltarion uh, platform, then it's probably me who's going to answer them. So uh, please reach out and have any questions. Uh, so that's all. Thank you so much for having me. Mm. Thank you very much, Kalle. Mm, thank you. Thank you for coming, and thank you for your very nice presentation. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Yes. So, if you have questions for Kalle later, please join the panel and uh, ask them at two o'clock. I have some questions right now. How come you got into tech writing?
Oh, uh, that was because I, I'm an engineer, and I, uh, when I graduated from KTH, I realized that I'm uh, pretty much as good as everyone else at uh, uh, making machines that works. Uh, but then I realized I'm uh, much, much better than everyone else to explain stuff. Mm -hmm. So then I transitioned to tech writing because it's uh, much more fun to be best at something. Yeah, <laughs> right. Sounds really interesting. <laughs> yeah. I, I, as I said, I <laughs> myself have a background as a software developer, and usually it was like tech writing was like, oh no. Not the tech writing. Yes, exactly. Nice. There, there's yes. someone for everything. Yes, exactly. There is. And I have another question. Yes. Um, what do I need to bring to the Peltarium platform? I mean, how should I organize my data to use your platform? Uh, you, the the th three different kinds of data you can bring in. It's like uh, images, tabular, and text data. Yep. Yeah. So what we, what you need to bring is that you need to uh, need to be annotated. So if you have images, it needs mm. to be uh, you need to sell. So this is a cat, or this is a walrus, or uh, you need to, to you need to have it needs to have the historical data that you have already so uh, annotated. So okay. if you predict. Is there a spec specific format to annotate this or? Uh, your, uh, no, or is no, it like no? No, no. Yeah. Uh, and it's also, uh, but it's, uh, but uh, but you can also. Uh, there are. Uh, we also have data uh, on the platform mm. so that you can use freely. So, if, for example, if you want to do a sentiment and analysis uh, model, mm. and you don't, and you don't, if you have data that is not annotated, then you can use the uh, one of our data sets that's already annotated, and then you can uh, build a model, train it, and then uh, and then you can uh, see, uh, get the sentiment analysis from that, and you can pour your data into it, and then you can predictions what kind of sentiment your information have. So, my first reply, instinctive reply, was it's not totally correct, nope. but uh, but uh, which but then you also need to remember that the data uh, you predict from. So if you if you uh, it's if it comes from IMD movie database, then uh, the sentiment comes from someone saying uh, it's a good or bad review. Yes, and then you must realize, yeah, do I agree on that? And does that really translate into make maybe Twitter sentiments or mm. or CRM system uh, reviews sentiments? Uh, so you have mm. to always think about what. What garbage in, garbage out. Yes. <coughs> what, why does it this uh, model predicts this? Mm? Uh, yes. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Last question. Yes. Would you trust the AI then? Uh, if someone predicts, I mean, uh, yes. showing like red shoes in a in a shop yeah. is, is kind of unharmful. If the user gets searched for red shoes, yeah. they get green shoes. The, the user will. Wow. Exactly. This so is I would say I would say with AI, it's always um, so. If I if I doing the predict cancer, for mm? example, then uh, like the hardcore uh, uh, topic, uh, then then uh, I would say no, I wouldn't always do do it. But I would say it's. Uh, if if the if the AI predicts uh, it's uh, almost dead certain that it's not cancer, and then it leaves it to a doctor to say the final decision, mm. and I think that that's it's like it, a tool. Yes, yeah, it's a tool. So you you shouldn't see it's either human nor or AI. AI. It's, it's both human together. extended yes, tool. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so that's you can use. So, so, so it's for empowering you to make your life easier and more like your your decision making better. Mm. So not tr not trust it that. Uh, from without knowledge and that is why you need to have the knowledge and uh, and it's readily accessible for you mm. out there yeah again thank you very much Kalle. thank you for being for coming